Territorial disputes have been an ever-present issue between countries throughout history. After all, it's how our modern borders were mostly established by conflicts taking place over those disputed areas with one side winning and taking control of it. Violent border disputes are mostly a thing of the past, although they do still exist today as we'll see ahead on the list of examples for this video. But regular diplomatic disputes exist all over the place. Some are pointless and have been ignored by the two sides like Portugal disputing Oliveza with Spain. But others remain a topic of heated discussion between neighbors, leading to military disputes and having the potential of escalating to full-out wars, although definitely not for all the examples on this list. In this video, we're going to take a look at 9 or 10 examples of disputes that are still mostly relevant today when this video is being made in 2023. First, Guyana is a Kiba, which is already arguable regarding its relevance today, but still interesting to learn about. Guyana is a Kiba is a dispute between Venezuela and the country of Guyana. The region is also sometimes just called Ezequibo, and it takes its name from the local Ezequibo River, a disputed territory of 159,000 square kilometers, administered today and an integral part of the country of Guyana, previously a British colony, also partially Dutch. It takes up more than half of the country, so losing it would be disastrous for Guyana. Venezuela claims it, but they didn't come up with the idea of the dispute. Just like Guyana was a British colony, Venezuela was a Spanish one, and the territorial dispute between the modern countries was inherited from their colonizers. The status of the territory is subject to the Geneva Agreement, which was signed by the United Kingdom, Venezuela, and Guyana in 1966. This treaty stipulates that the parties will agree to find a practical, peaceful and satisfactory solution to the dispute. In 2020, the International Court of Justice accepted the case submitted by Guyana to settle the dispute, but I believe Venezuela did not accept the ruling. Guyana actually disputes another territory too with Suriname called the Tigri area, a wooded area disputed since 1840 also inherited from a colonial dispute, this time between the UK and the Netherlands. It was occupied in 1969 by Guyana. In 1971, they both agreed to retreat military forces, but then Guyana never did, still holding the territory up to today. Then the South China Sea. Arguably the most important example on this list, territorial disputes in the region involve conflicting island and maritime claims by several countries, Brunei, China, Taiwan, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Vietnam. An estimated $3 trillion worth of global trade passes through the South China Sea every year, which accounts for a third of the global maritime trade total. 80% of China's energy imports and 40% of their total trade also pass through it, so you can understand why controlling it is important. There's also the issue of fishing rights and the exploration of crude oil and natural gas. The map of the sea area is very chaotic, with tiny islands being claimed, while other artificial ones are being built, mostly by China, and there are several outposts, many of which military, established there by China, Malaysia, Vietnam, and the Philippines. This chart shows us a summary of the eight main disputed areas and which countries claim each of them. The dispute's origin can be traced to 1932, when France claimed the Spratly Islands with the objection of China and Japan. In the 21st century, Vietnam, the Philippines, and then China began building artificial islands to extend and justify their claims on territorial waters. This issue remains unresolved until today and is seen as one of the biggest geopolitical issues in the world. Before we keep going, I want to take a minute to thank the sponsor that made this video possible, Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a great, one of a kind streaming service, and they have documentaries, films, and shows that you can't find anywhere else. I've been watching this really cool series called Bastions of Power, where they get into what life was like inside medieval European castles. Castles are so iconic for medieval times, but often we don't really know what life was like in them at the time. But if this one doesn't pique your interest, they have new content added every week across many categories like history, science, nature, technology, or even music and food. There's really something for everyone in there. Their service is available on a ton of platforms, TV, computer, your phone, and the best part is that it's considerably cheaper than other streaming services. Go to curiositystream.com slash general knowledge or scan the QR code for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series and for my fans use the promo code general knowledge and you will save 
25%. So click the link in the description or go to curiositystream.com slash general knowledge and try out their service today. Next is a very well-known dispute that seems to last forever, Kashmir. The Kashmir region is a subject of dispute between India, Pakistan and also partially China. The issue has some colonial roots too, as before Indian and Pakistani independence, the whole territory was united in the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir, part of the British Raj. It led to three wars between India and Pakistan and several border skirmishes. India controls approximately 55% of the land and 70% of its population. Pakistan controls about 30% of it and China the remaining 15% mostly uninhabited. I believe China and Pakistan have reached an agreement to recognize each of their claims, correct me if I'm wrong, so now the dispute is just between India and the other two. India bases its claims on the fact that the ruler of the princely state signed a document to join the dominion of India. Pakistan claims they should rule it due to its Muslim majority population and China I honestly have no idea why they claim it. The dispute continues today and doesn't show any sign of going away anytime soon. Still in Asia, to the north, we have the Batkan region. The borders between Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan are some of the most chaotic I've ever seen. There are exclaves, enclaves, weird border carvings, it just seems to make no sense and gives off the idea that even they don't know what the borders are or what they should be. A lot of this is not their own fault though, and mostly the responsibility of their former ruler, the Soviet Union. The Batkan region, where the border of Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan is, is a good example of this. The border between them is 970 kilometers long, but only 503 kilometers have been agreed upon. Batkan is ruled by Kyrgyzstan, but has Tajik and Uzbek enclaves within it, and all of these three countries dispute the territories. The Fergana Valley is another example of these disputes. It's just a mess of borders, and I can't even understand half of them by looking at the available maps. I doubt this will ever escalate to a full military conflict, but I don't know when they will be able to resolve it. Moving to two regions highly involved in conflict though, we first have the Golan Heights. The Golan Heights have historically always been a part of Syria. In the 16th century, it was conquered by the Ottomans and administered through the Syria Vilayet. It was then transferred to France and ruled by them through the French mandate in Syria and the state of Damascus. In 1946, Syria became independent and kept the territory. However, since the Six Day War of 1967, the two thirds of the Golan Heights that border Israel have been occupied and administered by them. Syria refuses to engage in any negotiations with Israel and the UN states that Israeli annexation is illegal. However, Israel maintains it has a right to retain the Golan, arguing that Syria's internal instability requires an Israeli-controlled buffer zone. The territory has rare water sources and is naturally fertile as well. This region remains highly unstable and the dispute may again lead to conflict in the future. A similarly volatile situation exists to the north in Nagorno-Karabakh. The region is inside Azerbaijan but is mostly populated by Armenians. The two countries have several exclaves, some of which have been occupied since by each other precisely due to this specific dispute. The Nagorno-Karabakh region is claimed and partially controlled by the breakaway republic of Artsakh but is recognized internationally as part of Azerbaijan. The issue can be traced again to previous rulers. When the Russian Empire fell in 1919, the Caucasus countries were briefly independent and both Armenia and Azerbaijan claimed the territory. In 1920, there was a first conflict ended by the re-annexation of the Caucasus by the Soviet Union, but history repeated itself. And when the USSR dissolved in 1991, the issue came up again with a new war taking place until 1994. The population of the self-proclaimed Republic is 99% Armenian, but their connection to Armenia itself is limited to a 5 kilometer corridor, and almost all their territory is under the control of Russian peacekeeping forces. The conflict resurfaces every now and then, it did in 2016 and then again in 2020. I doubt this issue will ever see a solution, and conflicts will keep coming up every now and then. Next are the Kuria Muria Islands, a group of five islands in the Arabian Sea, 40 kilometers off the southeastern coast of Oman. They were ruled by the Sultanate of Oman for a long time until 1854, then the Sultan gifted them to British Queen Victoria. In 1886, the islands were attached administratively to the British Aden Protectorate in modern-day 
Yemen. Due to their remoteness, the inhabitants continue to consider themselves subjects of the Sultan of Muscat, and British officials only visit the island every now and then. In 1967, the British transferred them back to Oman, stating that it was the will of the locals, but the newly independent southern Yemen stated that since they were administered by their predecessor, the colonial protectorate of Aden, they should be a part of Yemen instead. The boundary between the two countries was only settled in 1992. This isn't a territorial dispute anymore, but with the instability in Yemen and its internal conflict, you never know what the emerging state might go back to claim. Another set of disputed islands are the Chagos Archipelago. They are located south of the Maldives in the Indian Ocean, ruled as the British Indian Ocean Territory, part of the United Kingdom, but claimed by the country of Mauritius, even though they're pretty far away from it. The argument was that Chagos was a part of the same colonial administration as Mauritius, and that the British divided them prior to granting Mauritius independence in order to keep them. Mauritius claims this is a violation of United Nations resolutions banning the dismemberment of colonial territories before independence. The UK government disagrees, but it has also stated that the Chagos will be returned to Mauritius once the islands are no longer required for military purposes. In 2022, the British decided to begin negotiations for this transfer, and it seems there will be a peaceful resolution for the issue sometime soon. And finally for this video, Mayotte, which presents us with a similar case but this time involving the French. Neighboring Madagascar and the Comoros Islands, Mayotte is an overseas department of France. It became a French colony in 1841 when they bought it from a local sultan, with the other three islands that are Comoros today being added in 1886. Mayotte chose to remain with France after the Comoros declared their independence in 1974 through a referendum. However, the Comoros still claim them as their territory due to the fact that they are a part of their archipelago and they highly criticized the presence of a French military base in the region, reinforcing this claim as late as 2022. France states that it has no problem with transferring back the islands should that be the will of its people, and in 2009, a huge majority of 95% voted to be further incorporated as a French territory, reinforcing the similar majority that refused independence in 1974. Contrary to Chagos, it doesn't seem like this one will be solved anytime soon unless the locals choose to change their mind and join the Komodos or the Komodos themselves give up their claim. So, those are a few of the relevant territorial disputes that still exist in 2023. Some basically non-existing anymore, some existing but on the path to resolution, and others being nowhere near being solved, some even constantly on the brink of military conflict. What do you think about these disputed territories? Which side do you think is right in each case, and which other relevant territorial disputes still exist today? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching this video, subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.